the line. The line is lining. Our gate closes in four minutes. Zero chance of making the flight. We need to complain. Good morning, I was gonna say, but it's actually almost 1 p.m. We just woke up because Oscar and I arrived from the Middle East this morning at 5 a.m. Now we're gonna head down to one of our favorite airport food courts in the world before heading over to the other terminal to fly Malaysia Airlines down to Singapore. Okay, although we're only flying economy today, I have one world emerald so we can use the first class check-in. Mm. which will be much appreciated, I think. All right, super fast check-in. The last time I was here, the last time we were flying Malaysia Airlines was in August 2022 when we flew from here to Jakarta. Mm. So today it's just a short hop down to Singapore, but we'll get to see what their new 737 cabins are like and what the general experience is like flying via KLIA-1 on Malaysia Airlines. The line. The line is lining. <laughs> okay, so after waiting in those lines for 45 minutes, we have to go to the business line because our gate closes in four minutes and we still had probably 20 minutes left in this line, so what are we gonna do? Okay, update. We missed our flight. That was a first, actually. Literally the most important flight we've taken in a long time, and we miss it because it was literally over an hour waiting in the immigration line. And we waited yeah. for almost an hour. Yeah, we waited 45 the minutes. There was about 20 minutes left, I would say, so. So now we're most concerned about our bags because there's our suit, our everything. Everything we need for the wedding. Yeah, so we are gonna um, go back to Malaysia Airlines, try to retrieve our bag and then get rebooked on a later flight. What an adventure this turned into. And obviously <laughs> it's only our fault for arriving an hour and a half before the flight. Then again, I feel like an hour and a half before a one hour flight is not that crazy and yeah. you don't expect immigration to take over an hour but yeah and this is yeah. the first time ever that we missed a flight I don't, have you yeah. ever missed a flight uh not traveling alone yeah so i think the frustrating thing here is besides the fact that the line was so long is the fact that i asked literally an immigration officer what should we do our gate closes in five minutes and he said go to the business class and first class line, they'll let you through. So we went there and they were so rude. They completely refused. They said, no way, you have to go back and get in the very end of the previous line. So I went back and asked the same guy. I said, they rejected us. And he said, oh, you should have asked the people in your line if you could skip ahead. And I'm like, how about you told us that or told me that before we left the line? Because the fact that he said that ultimately made us completely screwed and gave us zero chance of making the flight. So yeah, just not, this will be an adventure as we've said. Okay, I don't know where the video cut off. So our flight was supposed to leave 325. It's now 310. So they can't actually offload us or do anything. They told us to go to the ticket counter. So now we just have to hope, I don't know if I wanna rebook on Malaysia Airlines. I kind of want to book Melindo Air. There's a flight at 740 in business class. That means we'll get priority immigration, which we now know is very valuable. The flight is only $100 per person in business. So let's see here. The moral of the story might be to try to book an airline like Melindo instead, since their business is often charged a close to Malaysia Airlines economy, in which case the benefits on the ground, especially of flying business, can be so much more. Even if you have status, for example, I have the highest status in one world and there's still no priority immigration, for example. All right, I'm kind of like scared to book Melindo because we don't know how long this whole bag debacle will take, but given that it's only 20 past three and that flight leaves at 20 to eight, yeah. 
Wait, wait, we need to oh, okay, good. Oh. The thing is, when he explained like the process we need to go through now to retrieve our bags, I was like, that sounds like a three-hour debacle. So, um, hmm, we'll see how this goes. Us and all the other people who missed their flight. <laughs> so basically, he said, or we said, we don't want to pay the fare difference to fly Malaysia Airlines because the next flight is $500, but we can fly business on Melindo for 200. That's in total for both of us. So uh, he said, all right, if you want to retrieve your bag, go to the security pass counter, get a security pass on the second floor. Yeah, so basically we need to get a security pass. Then we need to go to the Malaysia Airlines baggage counter and wait for them to get our bags, which who knows, could take hours. So I hope for the best. So we got uh, a ticket number to wait in line and uh, they are only announcing all the numbers in Bahasa. So <laughs> we'll see if we can make it. Again, I know this is kind of self-inflicted, but nonetheless, we need to complain. Well, we're not complaining. We're just sharing the situation, the frustration. You need to be realistic about it. Exactly. That's just... Uh, it's all part of the adventure. And this video, which was supposed to be Malaysia Airlines, might end up being a Melindo video. Who knows? Or maybe it will be a KL to Singapore bus video. No. <laughs> So I got my pass, only I'm allowed to go in since only the bag is in my name. I, I don't wanna say I'm nervous, I'm a little nervous to book the flight and like, I just hope we make it, we have to make it. So we hope for the best. Hopefully, I think this could take about an hour and a half, two hours, in which case we still have two hours until the next flight. There's no other option, really. <laughs> So, and uh, yeah, and we have to make, make it there tonight. So. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's just But it's good that we'll make sure we have the bag because that's yeah. so, so important. Cool. Okay, so we're using the staff entrance. <laughs> this is exciting. Oh, you are, I'm not. Yeah, Oscar has to stay behind. Please connect to Wi Fi. I hope it works. Because we have to be able too. to stay in touch. Yeah, oh. it hasn't been working. So while he goes and does that, uh, I guess I'll just have to pass time <laughs> and I'll try to find Wi-Fi so we can stay in touch and uh, I'll get something to drink and work on our wedding speech because that uh, needs to be polished up. Still, yeah, very last minute. <laughs> so while he's in there sorting everything out <laughs> with a bag, um, I'm out here working and I'm polishing up on the wedding speech. To our credit, it is basically done. It's just, it can be even sharper. So. Hopefully we'll be able to share this with you guys somehow as well. Probably on Oscar and Dan somewhere. So if you want to see our declaration of love and uh, our story <laughs> with uh, our dear friend April Lynn, uh, you should check that out once we release it somewhere. Okay, I made it through to luggage claim. Let's hope I'm in the right luggage claim because Malaysia Airlines told me to go to domestic luggage claim, but here, everyone told me to go to international, so hope for the best. Okay, they just said it could take 60 to 90 minutes to collect the bag which would be enough time technically to make the flight. The problem is I don't dare to book it before we actually have the bag, which makes this a little more nerve wracking because we need the bag as soon as possible so the price doesn't go up. Yeah, I will keep reporting, but for now I sit here all alone. Okay, glad I have this, <laughs> look at this. All right, I'm just working here on my laptop. One thing I forgot to mention, which is some important context, is that as we were in line, other airlines were collecting people who were late. So for example, Sri Lankan Airlines was going through, anyone on Sri Lankan Airlines, anyone on Sri Lankan Airlines? And they collected all those passengers and took them through some priority lane. Malaysia Airlines didn't do the same thing, which in one way it makes sense because it's their hub, so they would have tons of passengers doing that. On the other hand, imagine how many people missed their flight today with a one hour immigration line. <laughs> Oh, you see what this is? The bag. 
It took an hour's wait, so a very long time, but not even the upper limit of what they said. As I received it, I, the second I saw it, I was like, quick, 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 Melindo Airlines. I booked the flight, still $106 per person for business class. So now, next time we go through security, we get priority and everything will work out. It's three hours until that flight, so there's plenty of time, just have to go return my little pass, get my passport back, and then head through immigration. All right, it seems like he made it out. Ooh. Got it. All right, we have our flights at least, our ticket. The question is, I think we should take our suit out for this flight. Ooh. I don't know. I Maybe. don't want to be so nervous again. Yeah. Now there's like a million people down here, so <laughs> keeps <laughs> going well. All right, hopefully, I just need to change this for my passport, so hopefully it goes fast. Okay, at least I got my passport quickly. So now we have two hours and 50 minutes. I think this time it should be enough. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Even though it really has nothing to do with them, I'm glad we're flying Melindo and didn't pay to rebook on Malaysia Airlines because there's a small part of me that feels like they are fine with people missing their flights. That's the reason they don't let anyone through because those people will be late and have to pay a change fee to rebook. That's why they're not helping people like other airlines that would, you know, that don't have hubs here so they can't easily rebook people. That's what I'm thinking. So anyway, we'll see what Melindo is like, yeah. Okay, just kidding, it's not really Melindo, formerly known as Melindo, but it's actually Batik Air. Now we get business class check-in. Nice pink boarding pass. So this time we have our suits with us because I don't want to risk that freak out again. But I was like, what if we don't have our suits? What are we gonna do? So now we have our suits, our shoes, and our carry-ons. Which I think, I mean, this is like what people usually, sorry, this yeah. is what you people usually do, right? They I take know. their suits <laughs> as carry-on and not what we did, because <laughs> that's too big of a gamble. Yeah, we also have business class now, so it should be priority, which is like crazy, because I paid, I think $70 per person for Malaysia Airlines economy, I was thinking, mm, don't need to spend $35 extra for business because it's such a short flight. Came to regret that for sure. But now we maybe learned our we lesson. And maybe you guys also learned your lesson. If always check business class if you're flying to or from Kuala Lumpur because Melindo may just be a little bit more expensive than economy on Malaysia Airlines. And in that case, or I shouldn't say Melindo, it's Batik. Yeah. But then it's totally worth it. But so. I can't remember it ever being so crowded here, like with yeah. the lines at immigration and, before. Like, and there was a line there was a guy at the check-in when we were there yeah. who had also missed his flight, him and his entire family. There were there was a huge family, like two parents and three kids also when I was waiting for my luggage that had also missed their flight. So which everyone was, is just missing their flights yeah, today. Which is <laughs> so horrible. I mean for us it's one thing, but for families that have yeah. small kids. <sighs> Did you know? I'm so glad we paid extra for business class when there's an honest soul. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> Okay, an hour and a half of lounge time later, it is finally time to go to our gate and hopefully fly to Singapore on time with no problems. Okay, I think I see a plane at our gate. It's a 737 MAX, so uh, it's not a MAX 9. So uh, yeah. Oh, 
finally. Ah, we did it. Oh, well, we haven't actually <laughs> got there yet, but fingers crossed. Yeah, when we land, we'll feel good. <laughs> we have our suits and uh, we have our dignity, so. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> Still someone else's mask in here. That's kind of gross. Okay, we got an adjustable headrest. Good, good. Okay, the cabin feels very fresh and very nice. airy. Yeah. See, this is what I always say about the sky interior, the Boeing sky interior. We flew the Airbus E321 Neo in air space yesterday. This feels so much air here. It does. Okay, I think maybe I forgot to cheers you with a pre-departure drink, how dare I? But overall, great. I tried the recline feels great. The leg room is seriously amazing. Like for this price, I cannot believe I originally chose Malaysia Airlines. How stupid was I? Check this out. They also have all these different... Oh my god, look! Oh my no god! Way. I hope they have that Ooh. today. Vegetarian chicken curry. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I don't know if we can get this. Okay, should I tell the full story of what happened earlier? I feel like maybe I should, just for some more context. So we got to security um, about an hour and 20 minutes before our flight. We stood in line for 45 minutes, at which point I realized, okay, our gate is closing in five minutes because Malaysia Airlines closes their gates 30 minutes before departure, which is kind of crazy. So. I leave the line, Oscar stays, and I go and find someone, an immigration officer with a badge and everything. So I say, our flight, our boarding closed in five minutes, what should we do? And he says, oh, no problem, go to the business class in, uh, immigration line. So I think, okay, great, let's do that. I pull Oscar out of the line where he's standing. I would say we had 15, 20 minutes more to wait in that line before it was our turn. So we go to the business class line, and the guy's like, who told you to come here? Who told you to come here? We're like your colleague over there. What's his name? I'm like, I don't know, I didn't check. You go, you go tell me his name and bring him here. And I go, okay, so he wasn't letting us through. I go back to find him, he's gone. And then I realize he has taken position in an immigration booth. So he's stamping people and when he's free, I sort of go, hey, hey, hello. <laughs> so I have to ask, I'm like, excuse me, they wouldn't let us through. Finally, he comes out to talk and I'm like, yeah, your colleague says we're not allowed to use the business line. He's like, okay, then get back in the normal line. And we're like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, just get back in the back of the line. And I'm like, our flight leaves in five, or our boarding closes in five minutes. And you told us to go to the business class line. And he's like, yeah, you should have asked to skip ahead in your line instead. And I was like, but you didn't tell us that. You're an immigration officer. How are we supposed to know that what you say isn't correct. So then I was like, but you're here at a booth, can we just do it with you? No, cannot, you have to go in the normal line. So that is when we realized we were screwed. I basically begged, I put my hands together, please, please help us. The people at the business class line wouldn't help us, which is fair enough, but it was their colleague who had sent us there. So that is how we ended up missing it. Obviously, ideally, we wouldn't have had to skip ahead or do anything like that, which we didn't end up doing. We didn't ask anyone. But it was just kind of bad that there was that miscommunication, or not even miscommunication, just very bad instructions. Woo, we got a party snack. No, it's a snack party. A <laughs> snack party. Not the best idea to listen to this right now as we're about to 
take off on a 737 dash. Yeah, for context, that's mine and my friend Alex's podcast. We talk about the 737 Max, and uh, yeah, in this episode. So Oscar's like, what? <laughs> yeah, just as I'm like reading 737 dash eight on the like security card or whatever. I hear them talking about like, oh, this plane was grounded for two years or whatever. I was like, yeah, that's, that's a great opening right there. Okay, it feels kind of random that I didn't record anything during the flight. <laughs> We're already approaching, the flight is like 45 minutes, but we had 35 minutes of taxiing in Kuala Lumpur. So basically almost the whole flight time to Singapore, we spent taxiing, and now we're landing 20 minutes behind schedule. Could you even call this a flight log? Yeah, I don't know, it was just like a, Airport it was a missing <laughs> flight. <laughs> All right, just many hours after we had planned to be here, we made it to Singapore and I'm so relieved. Pretty sure that was the first time in my life I've had to clear security as an arriving passenger in order to clear immigration. I think it's because Changi doesn't separate arrivals and departures, so we're coming from a country that they deem unsafe. Apparently, we have to clear just in order to be able to get into the terminal where the other gates are to then go to immigration and luggage claim. But it's like the last thing you want after getting on a flight is to go through security for no reason. All right, I think we'll cut the video here because I was planning on showing you around Singapore a bit, but it's too late. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Maybe see if we have some more moral of the story down. What a day. We made it. Thanks for coming along. <laughs> Thanks for joining me in this vlog today, guys. Once again, I know it was my bad for missing the flight, but I think it all ended up working out for the better. I got to fly Batik Air for the first time in many years and what an incredible deal I got. So overall, not bad. You guys have heard me tell you many, many times the flying business class doesn't have to be so expensive. And this ticket is actually a great example of that. I mean, $100 for business class per person, doesn't matter the flight length, is pretty insane insane value but you can take flights you know 10 hours for less than a thousand dollars in business class in fact you can take flights that are 10 hours in the likes of ANA business class for less than seven hundred dollars if you learn the right techniques to do it let's say you want to go to Thailand if you live in Australia or the Middle East you can get there in business class as well for around six seven hundred dollars from Europe, you can get there for less than $1,000 each way. And why do you want to do that? Well, of course, traveling like this is so much less stressful. As you can see, if I had been in business class, I would not have missed that flight. I would have just sped through security in the business class line. That is one of many reasons. Of course, often you'll get a lie flat seat on board the plane. You'll get better food, better service. It's just all around such a superior experience. And as I've shown, it doesn't have to be much more expensive. So this is a reminder to always check the business class prices if you're ever thinking of going on a trip. If that looks expensive, know that by buying and redeeming points, many times you can save 30 on the lower end, 30%, you can save 50%, up to 80% of the cash price on some tickets by buying and redeeming points for those tickets. So when I'm talking about you can fly, you know, from Australia to Japan for less than $700 one way in business class on ANA, 
That is by buying and redeeming points. That cash ticket would be thousands and thousands of dollars. So you're saving 75, 80% on those types of tickets in some circumstances. And listen, if you want to procrastinate learning how to do this, you can do that and get stuck in these really long economy class lines and miss your flight like I did, unless you want to arrive at the airport four hours or three hours early. But if you don't want to and you want to change the way you travel, you can check out my points master program. It's at the link at the top of the description. There I teach you how to go from beginner to expert in seven, seven different frequent flyer programs covering over 70 different airlines across all alliances to make you an expert at buying and redeeming points for these airlines wherever you live with no needs for signing up for credit cards, anything like that. To learn a bit more about some of the examples I mentioned now, you can actually check out my free starter guide at that link as well. All you do is enter your email and the guide will be sent there within about 10 minutes for you to check out a three part free guide to get you started and introduce you to how this works to see if points master is something for you. So if you're ready to change the way you travel, click that link below and I will see you all in the next vlog.